A while back, I compared the Mazda CX-9 against the Acura MDX. I know, it's a bit of an odd comparison, but it's no secret that Mazda wants to move up in the market. They want to become a more premium brand. So I thought, hey, why not compare their CX-9 against an actual premium car in the MDX? If you're interested in that review, you can check it out up here. But long story short, I basically said that the Mazda CX-9 genuinely does feel like a premium car. So, does the same still stand true with the smaller versions of those two cars? Does the 2022 Mazda CX-5 feel like a premium product next to the 2022 Acura RDX? Well, let's go for a drive and find out. So let's start things off in the 2022 Acura RDX. The engine remains the same from the previous year's model, so it is still a 2.0-liter turbocharged four-cylinder that produces 272 horsepower and 280 pound-feet of torque. That is more power than the turbocharged four-cylinder in the Mazda CX-5, but it is less torque, whether that engine runs on premium fuel or regular fuel. This one has less torque. However, that peak torque figure of 280 pound-feet is reached at just 1600 RPMs and it's sustained all the way up to 4500 RPMs. So off the line, this car actually feels pretty peppy. However, it does weigh more than the Mazda CX-5. This one is around 1870 kilos as equipped, which is like 4100 pounds. Whereas the CX-5, as it's equipped, is about 100 kilograms less, or about 220 pounds less. So because of that, the Mazda CX-5 Turbo actually has a better zero to 60 time. Both car and driver and motor trend tested separately, of course, the CX-5 Turbo and the new Acura RDX. And the CX-5 did the zero to 60 sprint in about 6.1 seconds, whereas the RDX only managed about 6.4, 6.5 seconds. So that's pretty impressive on the Mazda's front. Now driving the Mazda CX-5, it is available with two engines. Well, technically it's only one engine, but it's either turbocharged or not turbocharged. Of course, there are some differences between it, whether it's turbo or not turbo. For example, the non-turbo version has a higher compression ratio than this turbo version. But anyway, I'm digressing. It is a 2.5 liter four cylinder, this particular one is turbo, like I said, and it produces 227 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque if it is running on regular fuel. If you put premium fuel, then it will produce six more horsepower than last year's model. So it'll be 256 horsepower and 320 pound-feet of torque. That peak torque figure is reached at 2,500 RPM, so quite a lot higher than the 2.0-liter turbo in the RDX. But interestingly, if you use regular fuel, then that peak torque figure is reached at 500 RPMs less, at 2,000. Will you actually notice that difference? Probably not. In all seriousness, I'm actually still trying to wrap my head around the fact that this CX-5 turbo is faster to 60 and down a quarter mile than the Acura RDX because you would think that the Acura is faster because it has more horsepower, but I guess the extra torque and less weight of this CX-5 really makes the difference. Now let's look at the fuel economy figures of these two. The 2022 Acura RDX A-Spec with super handling all-wheel drive is rated for 11.3 liters per 100 kilometers in a city and 9.1 liters per 100 kilometers on a highway. The 2022 Mazda CX-5 Turbo all-wheel drive is rated for 10.8 liters per 100 kilometers in a city and 8.7 liters per 100 kilometers on a highway. 
So not only does the CX-5 Turbo have better ratings, but it's also easier to achieve those fuel efficiency numbers. I averaged a combined fuel economy rating of 10.3 liters per 100 kilometers in the CX-5, whereas I was struggling to get near the RDX's rated fuel economy numbers. Best I was able to achieve was 11.5 liters per 100 kilometers. Paired with the engine in this Acura RDX is a 10-speed automatic transmission. You heard me say that correctly, a 10-speed automatic transmission with a 2-liter turbo engine. However, even though it has 10 gears, it doesn't feel like it's hunting for a gear when you put your foot down. It just knows exactly which gear to go to and it sticks with it. The shifts are nice and smooth and they're pretty quick as well. However, in my opinion, the ZF 8-speed that is found in most BMW vehicles is still the overall best traditional automatic transmission that you can buy right now. Having said that though, you can still have quite a bit of fun with this 10-speed automatic in the RDX, especially if you switch the drive mode into sport and the transmission itself into sport and use the paddle shifters. They're pretty quick to react to your inputs. Paired with the engine in the Mazda CX-5 is a six-speed automatic. Yes, you also heard me say that correctly, a six-speed automatic. This is one of the few cars still available on the market in 2022 with a six-speed automatic. But because Mazda has stuck with this six-speed and they've used it throughout their lineup of vehicles, they've had time to refine it to the point where it's actually really, really good. The shifts are smooth and they're also pretty quick. Also, if you put the transmission into manual mode and start using the paddle shifters, they are actually pretty responsive. So you can have quite a lot of fun driving this CX-5. Around corners is where the Acura RDX shines above its competitors. Standard for the Canadian market is Super Handling All-Wheel Drive, or SH All-Wheel Drive. This system can not only transfer power between the front and rear wheels, but also from side to side in the back. It uses real torque vectoring, not by applying the brakes, to better rotate the SUV when driving around corners. The steering provides good feedback to the driver and changes depending on the drive modes. In normal everyday driving, it is light for easy maneuverability. Switch to sport mode and it becomes heavier to provide a bit more feedback to the driver. The Mazda CX-5 on the other hand does not have such a sophisticated all-wheel drive system but it still has sharp and communicative steering that provides the type of feedback that you'd normally associate with sports cars, let alone a crossover SUV. Because of this, the CX-5 gives you the confidence to drive it around corners at higher speeds than other compact SUVs, such as the Ford Escape. New for 2022 is the addition of MI Drive. This is a switch next to the gear selector that allows the driver to select between normal, sport, and off-road drive modes. These modes change various parameters such as transmission shift points, throttle response, and even bumping up the engine idle among other things. For this 2022 model year, the Acura RDX is available as an A-Spec Platinum Elite. That's what it's called here in Canada. So you can get the sporty looks of the A-Spec, but with all the equipment of the top spec Elite trim. And that means that you also get adaptive dampers with this one. Of course, they do change their stiffness depending on which drive mode you're in. So in comfort, they're going to be at their softest setting. And in sport, they're going to be at their firmest setting. You can notice the difference between all of those different settings, of course. But even if you do switch it into sport mode, the ride is still pretty compliant. You can easily leave it in sport mode and just drive around city streets like that. You're not going to have a back-breaking ride. Acura has also done a little bit of fine-tuning with the active noise cancellation. So that system that pumps counteractive sounds through the stereo system to cancel out any odd and obtrusive noises from entering inside the cabin. Also, they have added a little bit more sound insulation throughout the body to make the cabin just uh, that little bit quieter. In the Mazda CX-5, it does not get adaptive dampers. But having said that, the ride is still pretty good. It is a little bit firmer than other competitors, more direct competitors, I should say, like the Honda CR-V or the Hyundai Tucson. 
But for everyday driving or taking the family on a long road trip, it's still comfortable. Noises inside the cabin are a little bit more evident in the CX-5 than in the RDX. Wind noise is pretty much negligible. Road noise is a tiny bit more evident. However, the engine noise is the most prevailing sound that's inside the cabin. But I'm okay with that because the 2.5 turbo engine and even the naturally aspirated version of this engine sounds pretty good. It sounds muscular and like as though it has power every time that you put your foot down. It's a nice deep tone. I like it. Sticking with the Mazda CX-5 and looking at the interior now, it hasn't really changed since this generation's introduction back in 2017, I believe it was, apart from the infotainment system and the screen. It's not a touch screen and I'll talk a little bit more about it later in the video. But as for the materials inside this cabin, it is the signature trim, so it has soft Napa leather for the seats. Just regular leather for the center console and the dashboard and the door panels, and it's really nice to the touch. There are, of course, hard plastics down in the lower portion of the cabin, but most likely you're not going to be touching them, and they need to be hard in case you smack them with your feet. In terms of space, for my above average height of six foot four, I can't complain. Legroom, perfectly fine. Headroom, more than adequate. So with that, let's go check out the back seats. In the back, there's an okay amount of space for someone of my height behind my driving position. So my knees are up against the back of the front seat, but there is a nice indentation so I don't feel completely squished. Headroom though is more than adequate. My hair isn't brushing up against the headliner. But in terms of actual leg space, the RDX has more of it. These outboard seats are heated on this particular trim level. The controls are right here. Your cup holders are here as well. And your USB ports are right here. There's two of them. And the only other thing that I can say about the back of the CX-5 is that there's a pretty sizable hump in the center. So anybody sitting in the middle, you're gonna have to sit with your legs wide open. Now sitting inside the Acura RDX and it is a pretty big difference compared to the Mazda CX-5. Of course, this particular one is the A-Spec, so it is the most sportiest trim level of the RDX. The steering wheel is contoured to your hands, so it fits really nicely. It is flat bottom, and I know some people don't like that, but it doesn't bother me whatsoever. It has a floating center console, so your wireless phone charging is right underneath it. And my favorite thing about this interior is, well, are the seats. Not only are they comfortable and supportive, but they really hold you in when you drive more aggressively around corners. Primarily because of these side bolsters, which actually don't dig into your side, at least they don't for me. And also partially because of this ultra suede trim down the center. So you don't slide around as much as if it were a full leather seat. All in all, this is actually a really nice interior. I really like it. Oh, and in terms of space, as you can see, legroom, headroom, no issues whatsoever for my above average height. So with that, let's go check out the back seats now. Now, like I said in the CX-5, the back of the RDX has a little bit more legroom for rear occupants. So behind my driving position, my knees are actually not touching up against the back of the front seat. They're close, but they're not touching. However, the same can't be said for headroom. I can feel my hair brushing up against the edge of the panoramic sunroof. So I do have to hunch down just a little bit so it doesn't touch. Just like in the CX-5, the outboard seats are heated. The controls are right here. And there are two USB ports, although these are USB-Cs. In the CX-5, they're USB-As. So they're the ones where you try to plug it in, it doesn't work. Flip it upside down, plug it in, doesn't work. Flip it back the other way, then it goes in. The cup holders are right here. And the floor is completely flat. So if you're a girl and you're sitting in the middle and you're wearing a skirt, you don't have to sit with your legs wide open. Looking at the trunks of these SUVs, the Mazda trades rear legroom for more cargo volume when compared against the RDX. It can accommodate 871 liters of space with the rear seats up 
and 1,680 liters of space with the rear seats folded. The RDX, on the other hand, has just 853 liters of space behind the rear seats and 1,668 liters of space with the rear seats folded. Interestingly, the CX-5 has less cargo capacity than its more direct rival such as the Hyundai Tucson, but the RDX has more cargo capacity than its direct rival such as the BMW X3. Just an interesting little tidbit for you there. Starting with the prices, the CX-5 Turbo ends in price where the RDX begins. This fully loaded signature trim costs $43,650 Canadian, whereas the Acura RDX starts at $46,900 Canadian. This A-Spec Platinum Elite will set you back $59,100 Canadian. But at least the price gap between these two top spec models is smaller than the gap between the top spec models of their bigger brothers, the CX-9 and the MDX. For the money, they both come similarly equipped. They both have heated and ventilated front seats, heated rear seats, heated steering wheels, sunroofs, power lift gates, surround view cameras, head up displays, wireless phone charging, and so on. But there are differences, such as the RDX has a fully heated steering wheel, whereas the CX-5s is only at the nine and three positions. The RDX has a larger panoramic sunroof, whereas the CX-5 has just a standard sunroof. The RDX has larger and easier to read lettering on the head-up display, whereas the CX-5s is smaller. So you are paying more for the RDX, but you're also getting more in return. One thing that they both have in common though is the lack of a touchscreen for the infotainment systems. The Acura has a touchpad and the Mazda has a rotary knob. The Mazda's infotainment system was updated for the 2021 model year and it works well with the rotary knob. It's intuitive. The Acura has what's called a true touchpad interface. So wherever you touch on the pad correlates to that exact position on the screen. For example, if you touch the top right corner on the pad, then the top right item on the screen gets highlighted. It takes quite a while to get used to this system as it is not like a touchpad on laptops for example. However, if you use Android Auto or Apple CarPlay often, both of these infotainment systems will test your patience. Those apps were not designed to work with rotary knobs or touchpads. They were designed to work with a touch screen. So in the Mazda, you're endlessly turning the knob until you highlight the item that you want. And in the Acura, the touchpad reverts to a more traditional touchpad control like the one you would find on a laptop. Again, both are very frustrating to use. Moving on from that, the IIHS awarded both of these SUVs with top safety pick plus ratings. They both had good scores in crash tests and advanced driver and safety aids. And finally, whether you're in Canada or America, they both have different and unique warranties. The RDX has a 4-year 80,000 km new vehicle and 5-year 100,000 km powertrain warranty in Canada. The new vehicle warranty is 4 years or 50,000 miles in America, but the powertrain warranty is 6 years and 70,000 miles. The Mazda on the other hand has a 3-year 36,000 mile and 5-year 60,000 mile powertrain warranty in America, whereas in Canada, they're both the same time period but unlimited mileage. So back to the original question, does the Mazda CX-5 feel like a genuine premium vehicle when you compare it against an actual premium vehicle? I think it does, but it is starting to show its age, especially on the inside, and especially when you compare it against this. This is one of the nicest interiors out there. Now I know, I know, these two are not direct competitors. A more direct competitor from Mazda against the Acura RDX would be the upcoming CX-70 or CX-60 in other markets such as Europe. But if you want something premium feeling, but you don't want to spend the extra money of the RDX, this is a very good choice. However, between these two, personally, I think that the extra money of the RDX is actually worth it. You're getting a little bit more interior space, a little bit bigger panoramic sunroof, a slightly bigger head up display. Everything is just a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more with the RDX. And like I said, even though there isn't that big of a price gap between these two compared to the CX-9 and the MDX, 
I still think that this one is worth it. And this is the one that I would personally buy if I had the money, which I don't. Anyway, if you want to know more about either of these two cars, I wrote more detailed reviews of them over on my website. You can find those links in the video description or click on the pop-up banners right up there. One's going to follow after the other. And as always, I will see you in the next car or truck or most likely another SUV. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and see you in the next video.